corals produce natural sunscreening compounds and what we've shown now through our research actually is that it's a relationship between these small plants, these algae and the corals working together to make the compounds to protect both of them. The clear waters of the tropics are actually very poor in nutrients and because corals can't move around, um, for them to survive they have to have a, a source of food. So to do that they actually have plants or small algae growing inside their tissue. But these algae, these plants, use the sunlight as a source of energy, which means that the coral has to live in very shallow water. So potentially then, it's going to be vulnerable to sunburn, just as humans would be. Through funding from BBSRC, it allowed us to go to the Great Barrier Reef for four months. And uh, we went out onto the reef, onto a research vessel, and then we carried out experiments actually in the field. So this involved diving down to depth where there's very little sunlight, uh, collecting corals from there and bringing them to the surface to see if we can actually induce them to start making the sunscreening compounds. And we were successful in doing that. We've brought the uh, coral material back to the laboratory and we're finalising now the biosynthetic steps with a view to be able to using uh, genetic engineering to recreate the compounds in the laboratory. Then once we've been able to do that, then that gives us what we call a sustainable supply of the compounds. So we don't have to go back to the barrier reef and keep on sampling corals. What we want to do is recreate the sunscreens in the test tube in the laboratory and then start testing them, first of all on simple uh, skin models, human skin models, but then ultimately we'd like to transfer the testing into humans. The real reason why we think that we can use the sunscreening compounds from corals in a human application comes from our observation that actually these compounds pass up the food chain. So you get small fish eating the corals, like Nemo in, in Disney, and then larger fish will eat the smaller fish. And so these compounds pass up the food chain. If we can create some kind of uh, tablet or formulation then, uh, hopefully the same thing will happen with humans. There's a real long-term goal of the project is to take our biosynthetic pathway from the corals and transplant them into plants. And if these plants are high-value crops, then hopefully we can actually make them more resistant to sunlight. And this is a real problem when you start thinking about agriculture uh, in third world countries. We can actually use the same material to study a phenomenon known as coral bleaching. And this is where uh, the corals actually die because they lose this symbiotic partner, this, this algae. Global warming is causing a rise in sea temperatures and this is responsible for bleaching. Coral reefs are believed to be the greatest source of biological diversity on the planet, much more than tropical rainforests. So because of this, these are going to be a really important source for potentially new medicines in the future.